A bunch of information about appraisals you never really wanted to know, but you might find it interesting. We're gonna get into it right after this. If you're new here, my name is Ryan Hensey. I run the Top Hat Connections real estate team with Keller Williams. And in today's video, we're going to be talking about appraisals. But on this channel, we talk about all things living in Tulsa content, real estate tips, and more. So if you're interested in that, I'd appreciate it if you would like and subscribe now. And let's get into today's topic. Appraisals are kind of that weird thing that no one really knows a lot about and ever since 2008, I think appraisers really got a bad rap and honestly the government kind of cracked down on them uh, with all kinds of loans. They are very uh, particular and basically if they get too many red flags against them for questionable appraisals, they're going to lose their license and they can never be an appraiser again. So there's a lot of requirements and stipulations on them now and here's some of the things that they look at and also things to remember when talking about appraisals. So appraisal considerations, what is the appraiser actually looking for when they are coming up with the value, right? So number one, is the subject property comparable with other properties in the area? Sometimes this can be kind of difficult. If it's a rural property, there may won't be that many comps that are similar, especially if it's like a ranch in Oklahoma, we get a lot of ranches and then like the property next door is like a mobile home, but the property that they're selling is a beautiful home on 10 acres and there's a barn and all kinds of stuff, well, it may be hard to find comparable properties in the same area because it's a rural property. Now, if it's a property in a neighborhood, that's a lot easier because a lot of the homes are gonna be very similar in size and shape and bedrooms, bathrooms, all that kind of stuff. So it can be kind of a tricky situation, but they have to be very particular on where they're giving value and where they're taking away value. Another thing they're going to look at is if the subject property is selling at a price that is higher than the range that was established for that area. We've seen a lot of this in the last few years as homes drastically increased in value and there were no comps to support that. And in that situation, we've seen a lot of people doing appraisal gaps. So they were paying over the appraised value of the house because they just wanted it that bad. And at the time, I mean, what are you gonna do? There's no comps, so the appraiser can't support that. So people were willing to pay cash over and above the appraised value because if you didn't know, people can only borrow money up to that appraised value. So anything over that has to be cash if the seller's not willing to come down to the appraised value. Another thing that an appraiser is gonna look at is the property, if the property is located next to or adjacent to commercial properties or vacant, ground or land that might become developed at a later date because it could have a negative impact on the property. For example, there's a really beautiful neighborhood in uh, South Tulsa called Legacy Park. Homes are beautiful and in the very back there is a subdivision uh, or sectioned off gated part of the subdivision that has beautiful homes in it and they backed up to a green belt at the time. Fast forward a few years, well now there is a event center and a lot of commercial businesses right there. And unfortunately, those homes really took a hit because no one knew that was gonna be developed at the time when they were building these several uh, thousand, hundred thousand dollar properties in their luxury homes. And now their value is unfortunately, um, has a lot of them were getting foreclosed on for a while because their homes were not worth what they paid for them when they were built. And, just one of the things that an appraiser is gonna look at is what are the projections for the area surrounding that home. They're also gonna look at the market in the local area. So is the property located in an area of stable or increasing values, or is it an area of declining values? Because all of that is of course a factor in determining value of the home. Another thing that an appraiser is gonna be checked on is if all the comparables that were used by the appraiser to establish the value, were they located close to the subject or did the appraiser have to look at properties in distant areas to establish those values? In that case, where um, when I was talking about the vacant land or the ranch property out in rural, rural areas, sometimes you have to go pretty far, sometimes even into a different city to find a comparable property. And then you have to make adjustments on top of that if the appraiser does, I mean, realtors do this too, but the appraiser is going to try to justify the value and document the fact that this property, this type of property is worth that over in this city. And then you also have to factor in the real estate market for that local area as well. The appraiser has to be able to clearly document exactly how they came up with the value and why they used a property that wasn't 
close by or in the same area as the subject property. Another big one is were all the comparables used by the appraiser sold within the last six months? Or did the appraiser have to use older sales to establish value? As a general rule of thumb, an appraiser will never go over six months. An appraiser is always supposed to be using the most current sales in the neighborhood. But this is where it gets a little dicey, especially if the real estate market is having a lot of turnover, like it was crazy just a couple years ago. I mean, still kind of crazy, but at the time of this video, it's not like it was. And if a home is selling, it's like, so the home is under contract right now. Another home in the neighborhood sold while that one was under contract. The one that sold needs to be used in that appraisal. And another thing to note is that an appraisal is really only good the day that you got it because the market is changing so fast all the time that you'll get an appraiser one day that will tell you it's worth this. And then another week later, you're going to get another appraisal. And I guarantee you that number is not going to be exactly the same because there's gonna be new sales, there's gonna be new information, there's market changes, there's um, yeah, economic changes. All that stuff happens very rapidly in the real estate market. And so no two appraisal values are ever gonna be exactly the same. Another aspect of the appraisal is, were all of the comparables that were used by the appraiser of the property adjusted to reflect the differences in the subject property? So things like, does it have a pool or doesn't have a pool? It has a you know, uh, it has an outdoor kitchen or it doesn't have an outdoor kitchen. It has all smart appliances inside, or it has, you know, a huge kitchen island, or it has an extra bedroom that the other houses doesn't have. All of those things is what an appraiser is going to look at when they are justifying the value. On the flip side of that, though, the appraiser, they're going to be judged on if they had to rely on excessive adjustments to establish the value. Because if you didn't know, appraisals are actually judged on a score of one to five with five being really bad. So most fours and fives won't even pass. It's got to be that one to three ratio um, where they, they have to be able to confidently say that this, this is a good appraisal and I'm confident in my opinion that, that this home is worth what I'm saying it's worth. So that gives you a rough idea of kind of what an appraiser is doing when they're coming out to those properties that they are appraising. Side note, if you're in Oklahoma and you want to get into the appraisal space, it actually can be a pretty lucrative career. Note, you are severely scrutinized. So it's got to be someone who is, wants to be an appraiser. I would recommend someone who's very meticulous and likes doing a lot of research and numbers and is very good at you know problem solving and, and really research in general is what it comes down to. So let's switch gears a little bit and talk about some things to remember when we're talking about appraisals. Appraisers, they are independent third parties. They are not affiliated with the lender whatsoever. That rule went into effect way back in 2008 because there was a lot of under the table back scratching going on with the appraisers and the lenders. And the lender was like, well, I need to do the loan for this much. So I need you to tell me that the house is worth this much. And unfortunately, real estate market crash, right? All that has gone away. There is too many um, rules and laws in place to prevent that. And one of those things that came out of 2008 in the crash was that the appraisers have to be third party independent and not affiliated with the lender whatsoever. Now, the appraiser is paid directly by the lender, and that can be a little bit confusing. But when you are paying all of your fees for your loan and you're buying a house, one of the fees is the appraisal fee. You give that to the lender and the lender pays the appraiser for you on your behalf so you don't have to worry about it. Another thing to remember is that the appraisal at its core is used to determine whether the home's contract price, the contract for the, that you offered, however much you offered for the home, is appropriate when it comes to the home's condition, location, features, and all that other good stuff we've already talked about. The good thing is, even though you have to have an appraisal when you're getting a loan, it's sort of for the lender, but it's also good for you too to know that you're getting a home either a good deal or if it comes in low, well, you have to make that decision is how much do I love this house? Especially if an appraisal comes in high and it's above your contract price, well, now you know you have built-in equity. So it's kind of a win-win either way. Remember though, an appraiser's valuation of a home is their opinion of what the property is worth. It really doesn't matter what you as a buyer was willing to pay or what the seller was willing to accept. Side note, this is really for the sellers. Typically the realtor will not be present at the appraisal because the appraisers all have MLS keys or access to the properties the same way the realtors do. They also, along with that, have access to all the property databases as well. 
But realtors, what we need to do is if there are comparable sales that aren't on those resources, property database, database resources like uh, off-market deals, properties that sold without realtors, things like that, we need to be aware of those. It really comes into play in new construction neighborhoods because a lot of those homes are sold directly by the salesperson and they don't necessarily go into those databases. So uh, a, an appraiser isn't going to have access to that information. So we as realtors have to make sure that that information, if it is a comparable property, is available to the appraiser because honestly, that can be the difference of getting an appraisal that comes in for your contract price or an appraisal that comes in low. This one we kind of touched on already, but remember that an appraiser is not going to go outside of a subdivision for comparables if there are acceptable comparables within the subdivision. A lot of times when I go on listing appointments, sometimes a seller will say, well, that house sold for this much and why isn't mine? Why, why aren't you saying that? Why aren't you using that home as a comparable? Because I'm looking at it the same way as an appraiser is going to look at it. You can't cross main streets or highways or into different neighborhoods because it's a different market. Real estate is very hyper local. It's the same reason a home that's close to Cherry Street downtown is worth more than a home that's maybe in Midtown and not by Cherry Street because Cherry Street, if you're not familiar, is a very just popular area of Tulsa that a lot of people like to be close close by to. Same thing with Broken Arrow. If you live closer to Main Street in the Rose District in Broken Arrow, your home is worth more than a home in Broken Arrow that's more on the outskirts of Broken Arrow. It's not the same neighborhood. So keep in mind, an appraiser is always going to use comparable homes within the same subdivision. And in Oklahoma, on top of that, we have a lot of subdivisions that are like mega subdivisions. So there's like like Forest Ridge, you have Forest Ridge 1, 2, 3, 4, Villas at Forest Ridge, the Estates at Forest Ridge, Whiteford Forest Ridge. Um, the appraiser is going to want to stay within that section of the subdivision. So the subdivision within the subdivision, they're going to try to stay within that because especially if it's a gated off section, that section is totally different than the rest of the neighborhood. Only closed homes are going to be used in those comparables too. So if a home is pending, it doesn't really count. Sometimes I will get a phone call from an appraiser and he's wanting to know what a home is pending at because he's trying to come up with a value or struggling to come up with a value for a property. Now with real estate agents, we're really not supposed to tell anybody how much a home closed for or is under contract for until it closed because until it closes, it's not necessarily public information. But all that aside, we do get those phone calls because sometimes an appraiser is trying to figure that out and justify their value based on a lot of sales that are happening in the neighborhood. And sometimes they'll call and they just want to know if there were any concessions. A lot of times in a more normal real estate market, sellers will give concessions. You know, maybe they upped the sales price because they were covering some of the buyer's closing, closing costs. So it's not that the home was actually worth up here. It was actually worth down here, but they raised the price because this chunk was being used to pay for the buyer's closing costs and the seller didn't want to have to pay that out of their pocket. I hope that makes sense. But a lot of times I'll get those phone calls as well. The appraiser's value also will be within the bracket of the actual and adjusted sales prices of the comparable sales. So if you've ever seen an appraisal, you'll see all the different brackets of the homes and the deductions, additions, all that kind of stuff. And honestly, usually they're pretty good. Um, no one ever wants to get a bad appraisal, but appraisers, there are good and bad appraisers and the bad ones don't usually last very long <laughs> because nobody likes them. Um, but especially in Tulsa, in Tulsa and the surrounding area is a very small town. So it's like this little, the pool of appraisers is not that large. And unfortunately, when it is really crazy hecticness and it's hard to get an appraiser, if you're on the buyer side and you find out that the appraiser that was assigned to your property that you're trying to buy is an appraiser that's not from the local area, you should try to get a different appraiser because in those instances, that appraiser that's coming is not familiar with the nuances of the hyper local market. For instance, when I talked about Main Street and all that stuff, there are neighborhoods that are worth more simply because there is just a uh, emotional thing in that neighborhood that people love living here because of where it is. Not that the houses are so great or anything. It's just purely this area is just worth more. And sometimes appraisers that are out of state or out of the local area don't know those types of things. And it could be a problem. But anyway, I don't want to make this video too long. You probably didn't really want to know any of this, but if you ever are curious about appraisals uh, or appraisers in general and how it all works, 
hopefully you found this video helpful. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more real estate content, living in Tulsa content. I do a lot of home tours and all that good stuff on this channel. So I hope you guys have a great day. I'll see you in the next video. And if you have more questions about appraisers, go ahead and drop them in the comments. And if I know the answer, I will definitely respond. I hope you guys have a great day and I'll see you in the next one.